Now, welcome back to Nigeria at 60, Diamond in the Rough. We cannot discuss Nigeria without looking at peace, and that includes security. There are those who say security is a hydra-headed problem, ranging from issues to do with insurgency to kidnapping, headsmen crisis, communal clashes. The primary responsibility of government, of course, is the safety and security of lives and property. And how peaceful is it in the nation, Nigeria, 60 years on? So let me introduce first uh, the Deputy Inspector General uh, of Police uh, on this occasion, uh, representing uh, the Inspector General of Police uh, on the show. Uh, DIG Adelaide Oyebade is in charge of planning and research in the Nigerian police. Thank you for coming in. Welcome Thank to you the so program. Uh, we've also been joined uh, by a former official, uh, they used to call them spooks, but uh, <laughs> former uh, Deputy Director of the Department of State Services, DSS, Mr. Dennis Ibakri. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Good evening. Welcome to the program. We're also yeah. expecting to be joined by the Senior Special Assistant uh, to the President on Media and Publicity, uh, Malam Garba Shehu. Uh, that link is still being established. But let me start with uh, you, Mr. Oyebadi. Uh, the police has primary responsibility for internal security in the country. So oh, how do you think we have fared overall uh, during this period to date? All right. Let's take it from the very beginning. That is, if you go back, 1960. It started as a nation, a United Nation struggle to get independence. So, a lot of hope. And you can see that build up till we started having challenges. And then we had, I mean, the story of the, the, the Civil War. The Civil War really marked the turning point because when you're talking of the proliferation of arms and the challenges that we have, you recall that it was after the Civil War that you now start thinking of how do we mop up arms that have been got into the wrong hands. That is very critical. And to the Nigeria police, it's a real challenge. From there, we started having issues relating to our own personal development as a nation. When you look at a nation, look at the family setup. The family makes the society. If the family is right, the society is beautiful. Now, you now see issues of cultism coming up. When the family have lost its own function, it relates back to the school. Then you see gangsterism, drug abuse, and lately you see what we have found ourselves with developments that the, the, the urban setting that set up make people to now start migrating, believing that the best things are in the cities. And then you see that the cities are now overstretched with the facilities, bringing banditry, because in those days, you travel from Lagos to Port Harcourt, you don't care. You even travel in the night. Night traveling was the best. These are how we have grown up as we are developing as a nation. The development comes with the security challenges. That is right. But how have we been able to cope with it? That is another question entirely. You now see the police is to take care of the internal security as it were. But do we have all that we need? Do we really have the right personnel? How do we train and retrain? And how do we put the right peg in the right hole? How do we get intelligence? How do we secure the Nigerian nation? How do we relate with other sister agencies? How about our, our, our neighbors? So all these are the issues that we need to really have to look into. Therefore, me, the Nigeria police is coming up with a concept that will address the issue. It is a global phenomenon, and it's community policing. Because we have developed a lot of communities now, and if you look at the Nigerian society, the crime that we talk now, the, the, there are areas where you look at the crime that is happening in one state. It's not happening in another state. We have 
a, a peculiar system of crime mapping the country, having the issues that are related. But there are those that are global, that are phenomena, that are core, that are all over. But there are issues that if you can nip them, you can prevent them, you can have a safer society. So the Nigerian police have come up with the concept of community policing. And the federal government have done a lot of homework, I must say. People are coming up to say, what do you mean by community policing? It has its root from when the Nigerian government asked the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies to conduct a research on community policing. And the theme then in 2018 was internal security framework, strengthening internal security framework and community policing in Nigeria, models, policy options, and strategies. And then we came up with those reports, and then the models were brought up, and then we developed the one that can best suit to the Nigerian society because of our heterogeneous system and the space that we cover. I am believing that if well utilized, if well strategized, if well implemented, uh, the challenges we have today can still be dealt with, with the communities coming to understand the problems, the challenges of policing and coming to, you know, to, to work with us, to understand the concept of trust and confidence that should be given to the police and then believing that there is no other Nigeria police, but we have one Nigeria police and that we can still do it. Mr. Makri, let me come to you. It's interesting he says we can still do it. We're big on audience feedback and what, what, people, what do people really think? So we did a poll about sectoral performance. Which of these sectors has performed better over the years? And we listed out the different sectors. Security, 1.27%. That's the perception out there yeah. of how the sort of confidence that they have in yes. that sector. Is it, is it a problem of this is a perceived feeling? Or has it, is it as... I don't want to say as bad as that, but um, is that where we are? Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah, perception means a lot, especially when it comes to security. You know, because um, security is not just uh, mopoles holding gun and standing outside your house. Uh, the, the perception that you are safe <laughs> will make you sleep better no matter who is standing outside your door. So perception, yes, is very correct. And... Of course, Nigerians are very, very worried because one of the major issues we have in this country now is public safety. Public safety and security, whereby um, we've increased or grown, you know, right from time. 1960, we were, when Nigeria got independence, we were about 45 million people. And um, in those days, there is no problem with crime. You know, I remember very well when I was a small boy, we used to go to, um, when my father was uh, posted to Bomu, Bomu, you know, Goni land. Mm -hmm. If you're walking down the path, you will see bottles of palm wine uh, put on a stool, and then, of course, some money by it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't take the money. If you want, if you're thirsty, you drink the palm wine. And put, and put the money about it and go away. Nobody steals the money. What about so, today? Yeah. yeah, but today you don't try that because society <laughs> has changed. You know, so um, our crime level has moved all the way from the days of uh, Jaguda. You know, I don't know if you know Jaguda. That's well, the I first, well, I do. The first gangster, you know, that we have in Nigeria. Um, the first gangster, or should I say arm robber, and uh, he was operating, they called them highway robbers then, highway robbers. They don't come into town. They operate on the highways, you know, and from Jaguda, the name has become generic now, you know, it can yeah, be referred yeah. to rough. Uh, area boys or something like that, you know, Jaguda boys, okay? And in those days, we, we gradually saw a migration of crime from the highway into the cities as urbanization grows up and Nigerians are, you know, actually populating uh, the cities and, uh, and our population was increasing. So we have different kinds of um, uh, crimes. Now, where is the turning point from that sedate uh, 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 society that we had to what we have now? You know, and 
If you look back into research, you'll find out that actually the turning point was the intervention of the military in politics and the behavior of politicians in those days. You know, because after we have our independence, everybody was happy about the new country that we have, it's our own, and everybody was happy. Then politicians started. You remember the wet year period. And of course, the military boys were looking at it and feeling that we could have a better country, and these politicians are, you know, messing up. So they intervened. And uh, since that time, we've not had a very good period. I want to interrupt you. I want to interrupt you and ask both you and uh, the DIG uh, the same question, but I want to start with you. Okay. Uh, and that has to do with intelligence. Okay. There are those who would argue that the fastest, cheapest, easiest way to prevent crime is to prevent it before it happens. Mm -hmm. And the easiest way to know about it is through intelligence gathering, regardless yes. of the type of crime. Correct. That led to DSS and sister agencies like the DSS. Uh, even the police uh, had an intelligence, I don't know if they still do, uh, uh -huh. intelligence gathering arm. What has happened to those? Because a lot of what is happening now, some have said, and I, if you don't agree, please feel free to say so, that it's a failure of intelligence. Yes, we've had a lot of intelligence failure. But intelligence itself, you see, what happened? When we started up, the police itself, the E department of the police, was the intelligence unit of the police. And they were responsible. When General Montala Mohammed was killed, assassinated, they felt that, oh, if we had this intelligence or the protective services, mm. he wouldn't have been killed. So what do we do? Like any other country, form one. And then the NSO was formed, the Nigerian security organization, you know, the father of the SSS and the Which FD. then became DSS. Yeah, okay. And, you know, so they were formed. And then, of course, one thing about this intelligence work is that you can gather your intelligence. Mm -hmm. And there are consumers of the intelligence. You don't gather it and execute it. You gather intelligence, you give it to the consumers. And who are the consumers? President, governors, uh, military, you know, and other top people, even the police. Now, what they do with intelligence is not your business. And that is the area that we're having right now. I can give you a very good example that happened recently. The governor of Borno State, mm. he was given the intelligence that this road is, is not safe. But he felt he could go. And being the chief executive, he ventured out. He was attacked twice. You know, and I hope he will not go again because at least they continue telling him, managing him to make sure that, you know, he keeps himself safe. There are certain procedures when VIP movements are carried out. And if you don't follow them, you, 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 you endanger yourself. And then... People will say, oh, it's an intelligence failure because they should have known that there are Boko Haram on the street. Yes, there were Boko Haram on the street. Yes, there was intelligence, but was intelligence used? Mm. Let me put you on pause. DIG, is that correct? I mean, you, you, you are one of the customers, as you described. Now, now, when you look at intelligence, you want to be proactive. That is why intelligence is very key. You want to nip it in the bud before it happens. You want to be preventive, you want to be proactive. That means you have to do more than the ordinary. And when you do more than the ordinary, you must be careful. There, there are what you call the need to know. When you're talking about intelligence, sometimes intelligence filter out and then there is a challenge. How do you now get back to the drawing board, do the correct thing, and let that intelligence still be a workable intelligence. So it has to do with the technicalities that are involved in intelligence gathering, intelligence sourcing, intelligence management. They are all very important before you now go to implementation. And then the processing of intelligence itself, where you get it is information. And when it is processed, it becomes intelligence. And even sharing of intelligence, 
vertically and horizontally has a lot to do with what you do with that intelligence at the end of the day. So all these things need to be put into the fore. And when you are talking about intelligence also, how about the personality, the capacity of the person holding the intelligence? And like he has rightly said, you give it to the right person. It's left for the person to, to, do, to do the needful. Sometimes intelligence gets to the right person, but it's stuck there. Okay, I know you've talked about that, but that's a highly placed individual. What about those who do not have access to that kind of intelligence? But I'm coming. As, as we're winding this down now, we were assured to a great degree that there was no Boko Haram in Baga at least. And now you find that even the governor is unsafe. Back to what I was talking about, confidence in the work that the police do. Mm. How do you marry those two together? The police still have to go in getting back to giving that confidence back to the public that we are here to do the needful. I've said it before. If the country continues to grow with that type of doubtful mind that can the Nigeria police do it, then we will not get to anywhere. So we have come up, like I've said, with that concept that is going to reshape and is going to give the path that we need to the Nigeria police of our dream. If we continue to look at it that it is not possible, I don't believe, I'm very optimistic that we'll get there. The right caliber of personnel must be there. The right training must be given. In those days, we go outside, we attend a lot of courses. We have interpol conferences to attend to upgrade our, our capacity to be able to do the needful. If those things are brought back and we have the right personnel to drive it, the Nigerian police is, 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 is good to go and we're ready to deliver. I promise and I know that with the caliber of police personnel we have in Nigeria police of today, working with passion, mm. we will get it and we'll get right. Mr. Bakri, uh, one minute. What, what, like him, are you optimistic looking ahead? I'm optimistic if we do the right thing. Mm. You know, I, you know, I'm sorry to disagree with the DIG, but I would, instead of community policing, prefer state policing, you know, because... What's the difference? Okay. State policing... Very quickly. Yes. State policing is where policing itself has been dissipated down to the grassroots. The people that are, you know, around a particular locality, because crime, criminologists have found out that crime is committed in a particular locality. The criminal lives around. And people that are there should know who the criminal is. Community policing could be a juice that you use in operating your state police. But structurally, because when you look at the structure, how is police, community policing going to work? We don't still want that unitary system of police because that makes the police ineffective. But if the police can take decisions, even at the local government level, then I think they will be more effective, they will be more friendly, because the people there will know them. The police will truly become your friend. But right now, people have this standoffish thing about police. And that's what we are saying. Know, and mm. that's the problem. <laughs> that's that's what, what you identified as that a problem. We will be able to let me thank, uh, all those let me thank uh, <laughs> Deputy Inspector General of Police, uh, Leo Yabadi, and uh, Mr. Dennis uh, Amakri uh, for very interesting conversation. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, uh, in terms of security, uh, many of what you've said, most people have never probably thought about in this way. Yeah. Uh, but so thank you for this input uh, today. So. Happy, Happy Independence Anniversary. Happy Independence to you. Yeah. We'll take a break. Uh, we'll come back and we'll have our final segment. Please stay on with us.